And listen to all that going on. Miss Kara's uh, doing really well with her lessons. She sits at the house and practices often. And we're getting ready to put her in the gang. <laughs> Whenever she thinks she's right, she I said, honey, you can play golf for it. You'll be fine playing imitation. She's like, no. <laughs> She went in one week, she told me, she said, you can tell Brother Paul that if he needs me, I'll be there. And right before the service, said, never mind, don't tell him anything. <laughs> okay. You know, that's how you, how you learn to play. Uh, Brother Sean, I told the, the story here, how I was in class that night teaching, and I kind of, uh, I said that uh, my wife had a piano teacher for, for three years, and they said she needed to quit, and she'd never be able to play the piano. She wasn't very good at it. And so the whole class is there in uh, in, uh, in New Jersey, it's about 30 students. And, uh, and so after it was over, I went over to your mom was getting the food ready for the for the institute. They get you know hamburgers or something, and and I said, Miss Higgins, you know, uh, I was just kind of thinking, you know, and and, uh, and I told her the story. She goes, Yeah, Sean had a teacher like that too. <laughs> and I forgot how it all really went exactly, but uh, ended up that Sean and Kara had the same teacher, and I thought, man, I can't believe that. She could have been like him right now if you didn't listen to that teacher. And uh, then I'd been like, you know, that would have been a blessing. Uh, but anyways, uh, and so this other lady comes into the kitchen. What? No, no, but didn't. What's your name? T yeah, this other lady comes into the kitchen. Nobody knows her. I can just. Anyways, we'll just call her uh, Karen. Uh, we'll just you know throw that name out there. Uh, but anyway, she comes in, and me and your mom are talking, and I'm I'm saying, you know, hey, you know, then right, and Miss Karen says, "What's my mom?" And then your mom kind of went quiet, and, and I looked at her, and I looked at her, and I thought, uh oh. <laughs> and so then the lady walked away. And I looked at Miss Higgins, I said, I'm sorry. She said, no, it's all right, Bert, it's just a... <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, we put Kara back in from the piano lessons, brother. We thought she could play like you one day. And so that's a blessing. We just say whatever we want here, Brother Horton. I wish I was the pastor that come to the pulpit like this. Good evening, congregation. We are going to celebrate the Lord tonight. And it's going to be a glorious night. We'll have a little special music, then you come preach, brother. But that's not what you got, so praise the Lord. I'll just be who I am. Amen. Uh, I feel like the Lord's okay with it. We're going to pray, and the brother Sean and, and Miss Higgins are going to sing. Uh, they have, uh, uh, and we want them to sing, they sing four songs. And then we'll give you an I'm not that you like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do that because everybody's going to be looking for the nod. You just come, brother, when they sit down. I'm not even going to look at you because everybody's going to be looking. Are you going to be looking for the nod? <laughs> no matter of fact, I see when they're done, you nod, brother, brother, work to come. Okay? Let's practice the nod right now. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Before they come, let's do this. Esther, come up here for a second. Come on up, sister. Don't play games. Esther is 11 years old today. You said, my birthday, you didn't sing for my birthday. I forgot if I didn't ever sing for your birthday. I've come to this pulpit when no one it's a first birthday. Walk right up there, I'm about to tell everybody we're going to sing and forget. And completely forget. But I'm glad Esther's here, 11 years old, today. When's your birthday? Okay. Let's check. We're going to sing happy birthday to Esther. Here's the pulpit so everybody can see. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Esther. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Glad Miss Esther and her sister Miriam, Miriam, wait a minute. And Miriam and Esther become the church. Amen. Amen. Bless it. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray. We'll have, Father, uh, we'll have the, 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 you guys sing, and then we'll have the Lord, you come and preach to us. It was good last night, wasn't it? Amen. 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 And it was a good Sunday afternoon. And uh, I thought each time he said, you think that was okay? And I thought, well, it was perfect for me, brother. It helped me out both times. And so I'm glad the Word of God can help us all. Amen. And so let's pray tonight. While I pray, pray this prayer. I, I, I do coach it a lot. Lord, touch me. Help me, Lord. Confess your sins. 
If you've got anything between you and the Lord, you drove up in the car, you know, carrying on and acting wrong all day of the day, man, get that right with the Lord right now. And, and so God could speak to you. When I said that, everybody went like this. <laughs> Did everybody drive up like that? I'm sorry. Let's pray and ask God to help us tonight. I like when God blows in and helps me. And I pray for Him too all the time. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help me. You know, often I pray for you in revivals. And God said, what about you, Bert? And then, man, I need it every time. So I don't even pray for you no more for the revival. I'm like, God, help me. And then when you, with every man for himself. Everybody pray for yourself. Amen. Everybody all right? I, listen, if you drove up arguing, it's okay. Just forget about that. Let's listen to the Lord tonight, okay? <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for the great service that it's been. Thank you for the great music, the great congregationals, the, the fellowship and handshake time, the people that love each other. Lord, what a blessing. God, and the, the, the common denominator is your son, Jesus Christ, in our life. And I'm thankful, Lord, that a, a man can bring his family from Arkansas to the inner city of Philadelphia and, and be able to uh, be have that in common with us here in Philadelphia. And Lord, that uh, folks can come across the river from New Jersey. And we've all got the same thing. we got you. And Lord, we none of us deserve you. You've been so good to us, God. Please shower us with your blessings tonight. Father, I pray, God, that you speak to our hearts. I beg you, God, to touch us. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. Uh, and, and help us. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, and touch us. God, we need you. Amen. I pray that you find Satan and any demon from this place. God, put a hedge of protection around it. Fight for us tonight and give us something from the Word of God. Help us with the music. And God, I pray that you bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, as long as we're alive, there's going to be peaks and there's valleys, and they come all the time. And uh, my wife and I had some things this past year. Uh, that just seems pretty dark. And, uh, you know, the rain, Bible says that rain falls on the just and the unjust. And uh, the awesome thing is, would I rather go through valleys alone or would I rather have God with me? And the obvious answer is that I'd rather have God when they come. And uh, this song, I'm, if, if, like I said, if you're alive, you've had the valleys before. And uh, this song talks a little bit about that. And uh, we'll, I'll sing it and just listen to the words. Hey, hey. 
and try to listen to the words of this next song. Our voices can never do it justice, but God truly is wonderful. And uh, probably one of my favorite songs in Christian music is just so timeless. And uh, picks you up when you're feeling down, whereas the world's music will push you further down. Um, but what a wonderful Savior we serve in Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
seemed like all I could see was the struggle.
And if you want to do the same, you can do that. I need to just pray for a few minutes. So if it were me, and you're not, but if you were me, I'd just get my family around the altar down here. And let's just spend a few minutes in prayer. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you listening now? Is that okay? Yeah. You all right? Because that's what we need to do. And you don't have to go to the altar, but get your family around where you're at. Um, I like to be on the altar. So why don't you sing that song, but whatever he's telling you to do, and let's spend some time in prayer just for you. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, but among men my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us.
appreciate you guys coming tonight and singing. And is this song that I have to turn this on? Hello, 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 hello. That was good. Mark chapter 5, open your Bibles there if you would. Mark chapter 5, verse 22, is that on? Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah. Make sure that's, you can hear me. You can stand if you'd like to. Honor the reading of the Word of God, Mark chapter 5. Too. Again, I so uh, want to just say thank you so much to Roberta for asking me to come to church for just hosting us and just uh, all the things that we've been able to do and modify and do uh, it to the Rocky statue, amen, and you know, it's all that. Uh, what were those things called that I made today? What? What? Apostolios. Man, it'll make you want to shout right there. That right there. We can shout her out on those subjects, man, right yeah. there. I'm just going to tell you that right now. We don't have pastillas in, is that how you say it? Pasta? Pasta Leo. We don't have those in Malvern. You can't find those in Malvern. You, you hear me? You can't find those in Malvern, amen? Arkansas. You can't find pastillas, amen? At least I can't find them. And that's a good thing. Because I'd be like 400 pounds if I could find all the stuff y'all have. Right. Cheese cheesesteaks and all that. I'd be, man, it would not be good. So I'm praising God that there's some of those things I can't find. Amen. Uh, Mark chapter 5 and verse number 22. I love Brother Burton Gates. Amen. Amen. For his wife, for his family. I'm so proud of him. So proud of JR. So proud of Brother Paul. I knew these men before they came here. And I'm so proud that coming here and just uh, sticking by the stuff. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And God is blessing, obviously. Mark chapter 5, verse 22, look at the Bible says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he saw him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Jesus went with him, notice this, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she had uh, she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? What a ridiculous question that the Savior asked. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith, thy faith, Amen. thy faith hath made thee whole. Pretty powerful story, right? Go in peace. Behold, I play. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Look at this now. Look at this. One miracle just happened. And another miracle just fell through the floor. Because his daughter just died. Do you know what it said? Look what happens here. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. We're going to speak on that subject right there. Be not afraid, only believe. You know the rest of the story, I think, right? You can read down through here and you'll find that Jesus went to the house and the daughter was healed and they laughed at Jesus and, and thought it was hilarious because he said the daughter, she's just sleeping. And uh, he took uh, Peter and James with him inside and the the uh, and John and, and took the, the the parents in and he raised up Jairus, uh, Jairus' daughter. Okay, I have a twelve year old daughter sitting over here, Ashley. She's twelve years of age, and I kind of understand that idea of your daughter laying at the point of death. 
uh, as far as, I mean, I, she's never been that way, but, but, you know, my own daughter, you know what I'm saying? When it's your daughter, man, it's, it's a com completely different story. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for all that you do for us. Bless the message. Clear my mind. Help me, Holy Spirit of God, to speak through the power of the Holy Spirit. I yield myself to you. I can do nothing without you. I need your help, and I know that. I realize that. I give you all the glory and all the credit for everything that is accomplished here tonight. Bless us tonight. You, use me, dear God. I beg of you that. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Human logic and reasoning contradict faith That's right. in what cannot be seen. That's right. You know what I just said? You missed it, didn't you? Let me say it again. Human logic contradicts faith in what cannot be seen. We just have a hard time if we don't see it, believing it. Yeah, right. A hard time with that. It's our pride, it's our own independence that fight against us in trusting in God and the Bible that He gave us. It's hard to convince many so-called intelligent people who want to see something before they believe. It's hard to convince them right. to believe in something they've never seen. That God loves them and God wants to help them and God can change their life. Jairus was the chief ruler of the synagogue. Let me just stop and say this. He was a smart man. You don't become the chief ruler of the synagogue by just being some average Joe. I mean, he was, he was the man. This guy was a sharp guy. He was a smart, he was an intelligent, intelligent man. Uh, the, the ruler of the synagogue, which simply meant he was the director of the synagogue. He was the one in charge. He was the one that ran the day-to-day -day operations in the synagogue. He was the man who told people what to do and directed people and said, this is where you go. And he was the leader of those people in that synagogue right there. Jairus was a smart man. He was an intelligent man. And yet he was a man of great faith. Or at least enough faith to believe that Jesus Christ could heal his 12-year-old daughter. He heard about Christ. Heard about the miracles that Christ had done. And he's thought in his mind, my daughter's dying. I, I called the physician. I, I've done what I could. No doubt this was a man of means. He had the money to call physicians. He had the money to talk to people. Find out for advice, man. This is what happened, man. Isn't that what we do? When we, when we have a health issue, we, we, we talk to other people and find out who has this problem. We kind of consult with other people. And that's why we hear a little information. Hey, you ought to go see this doctor. Don't, don't we do that? Right. No doubt Jairus has done that. His daughter died. She's 12 years of age. And he says, hey, how about that guy, Jesus? Hey, maybe a last ditch ever. How about that guy, Jesus? Look, let's go. It's my daughter, man. Let's go. And he runs to Jesus Christ. And he says to Christ, amazing, listen to what he says here. Listen to what he says in verse number 23. And, and he saw him greatly saying, my little daughter, daughter. Notice, notice the, the, the verse before, verse 22, Jairus uh, by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. So get the picture here. Get the picture here. Jairus is at Jesus' feet. And he's looking up at Jesus. He says, My little daughter lies at the point of death. This is what he says. Lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her. He's begging Christ. He's on his knees. I've driven around this town here. I've seen several different men uh, 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 on their knees begging people for change and, and money and different things. And I think of this man, Jairus, who was a man of means, and now his daughter, something that is out of his control, something that he can no longer do anything about, and, and he's got to get to the man who can do what he needs done. He's on his knees. Get the picture here. And he's begging Christ to come heal his daughter. Please listen to him. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Notice his faith. If you lay your hands on her, she shall live. Amen. I know he believed in Christ and Christ saw it. And look how hard it was to convince Christ to come. Listen to what Christ, look what it says in verse 24. And Jesus went with him. <laughs> I can see him on. You mean I didn't have to beg you? Jesus just, okay, let's go. He stopped what he was doing. Now look at here, look here. Couldn't Christ have said, she's healed, go away? Did he do that before? Yep. Mm -hmm. right. There's a greater lesson he's teaching here. 
Bob says, and he, he went with him. Okay, you want me to come here? Okay, yeah, let's go. And they're walking to Jairus' house. Let me ask you a question. How many of you think Jairus was in a hurry? Talk to me. How many think Jairus was in a hurry? Yeah. His daughter lied at the point of death. The physicians, the people who knew the sickness she was dealing with, they understood how severe and how serious it was. This was an intelligent man. He knew how quickly they had they, they literally last ditch ever. They get to Christ and he says, My he's begging him, my daughter will have one death. Would you please come and heal her? I know if you don't come and touch her, she'll live. And Jesus says, Let's go. And they take off to his house. <coughs> Just let me catch up with me. And right in the middle of that, Christ stops. Who touched me? Who, who, who touched me? And the disciples go, <laughs> who, who touched you? You see the crowd thronging. What, what do you mean, who touched you? He said, no, 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 someone, he touched me, oh, he touched me, oh, someone touched Christ. What do you think Josh is doing right now? Who cares who touched you? My daughter is dying. My daughter is dying. She's lying at the point of death. Who gives a who cares? Who gives a rip? Who touched? Who cares? I don't give a rip. I don't know you a flip. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me who touched you. We got to get to my house. And he's trying to be patient with the master. Who touched me? And this lady comes around. She falls at his feet. And she said, It's me. Amazing story. Right while Christ is dealing with this issue. Verse 25, this lady with the issue of blood comes and just completely sidetracks the master. Amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You imagine the grief that Jairus felt as he's sitting there wondering what's going to happen to his daughter and about that time as Jairus is talking, uh, listening to Christ as he's dealing with this lady who's at his, at his feet, and he's saying, uh, and he looks at her and says, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. One of the greatest statements in faith you'll find in the Bible. Thy faith. Whether you believe or not, you're right. Did you hear what I just said? If you don't believe, you're right. You're right. It ain't going to happen for you. That's right. Yeah. But if you believe that Christ can, it will happen. Yep. Thy faith has made thee whole. And right here, as this is all going on, and Christ is dealing with this lady, about that time, Jairus is standing over here. No doubt he's fretting, he's worrying. And all of a sudden, this servant comes up to Jairus, and he says to Jairus, says, Jairus, he says, your daughter is dead. And listen to the question he asks, Why? Troublest thou the master any further? Why troublest thou the master? Why troublest thou the master? Because he's the only one who can do the about it. Amen. Right, this, this is all going on. Christ is dealing with this lady. This guy just lost his daughter. She's dead. You think he's crying? Think he's crying? There's no doubt in my mind. He's crying. He, went, he begged the Savior to come and heal her. He was on the way. Have you ever been right there? And you, I mean, I mean, you, you, it was going to work out, and you're getting, boom, it slips right through your hands. You were, you were right there. Yeah, That's how Jairus felt that moment. I, can you see, can you see, can you feel the anguish and the grief Amen. that Jairus felt in this one moment when this woman interrupted his miracle and his need? Are you, you getting the picture? Yeah, amen. Huh? All this confusion is going on. Jesus Christ is talking to the woman, and he hears the servant say, Your daughter's dead. 
why trouble is stopping that. And all this confusion. Jesus looks at the woman, he stops, and he says to Jairus, 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 be not afraid, only believe. Amen. Whew. We could go to the house right there. Yeah, amen. We could be done with the message. We're not going to, but we could be done with the message right there. In that moment of what do I do? What do I do now? My daughter's dead. The Savior has just given instructions to Jairus. Jairus, number one, don't fear death. Number two, believe in me. Jairus has decided what to do here. And as the master gives him those instructions, what do you think he did? Well, he waited for the master to get done, obviously, right? So we know what he did. He took the master's advice, right? Be not afraid, only believe. Pretty powerful story. Bad news came to Jairus right when he needed a miracle. He had the master. He had the answer. He was so close. He could see it. An amazing situation here. Jesus Christ tells him, be not afraid. He says, only believe. And think about the power of faith in Jesus Christ. Christ had just made one of the greatest statements in faith and to this young lady, daughter, thy faith had made thee whole, go in peace. And, 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 and he's trying to help us understand that faith in Christ is powerful. Faith is the, is the only thing that uh, ever uh, made Christ marvel. When you think about it, and you study the scriptures, you'll find that there were uh, the, the only thing that made Christ marvel was two things, and that was faith and doubt. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 10. First of all, Jesus marveled at faith. Remember the Roman centurion that was not a Jew, built a synagogue and built it for the Jews and believed in Christ. And Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 10 tells a story. Luke tells a story as well. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 10. Remember what it says. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. We're leaving the story just for a second, because I want to lay a foundation to help you understand what it was that Jesus, what really made Jesus marvel. First of all, it was faith. Jesus marveled at this Gentile's faith. He marveled at them. And then he marveled at doubt. Two things that only, the only two things that said Jesus Christ marveled at. That word marvel means to wonder, to, to, to be wowed, to, uh, to, uh, by implication, to, to admire, uh, to hold an admiration. And so he marveled. And by the way, uh, the, 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 there's two different words. And the, 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 to wonder by implication, to marvel, is the one where he marveled at doubt. The one to admire was when he marveled at faith. Mark chapter 6 and verse 5 and 6, we find Jesus marveling again. He says in Mark chapter 6 and verse number 5, he says that he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands, I love this verse, save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk yeah. and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Two things made Christ marvel. First of all, he marveled at man's doubt. Secondly, he marveled at man's faith. Man, he marveled in an impressive. He was impressed when mankind showed great faith. Like Jairus was doing at this moment. And then he marveled at doubt. Wow. I've been with you. You just you guys don't care yet. Two things made him marvel. Doubt and faith. I'm going somewhere with this. Why is it that Christ marveled at both of these? Why do people who have seen the work and miracles of God doubt when God has done so much for them? Why is it that sometimes we who have seen God work like the disciples had over and over again, they've seen God do great things for them. Why is it that they marvel still? Why is it they doubt still? Why is it they wonder about God and His power and His ability? In this story, we see some great lessons that Christ teaches us about faith in God. Powerful lessons. 
amazing lessons that Christ, as he's handling this situation here with this, these two people here, that where, where one of them needed a miracle and received that miracle, and the other one needed a miracle, the same one, that they, that they both need miracles. One was dying with a disease. The other one, their daughter was dying with a disease. They were dealing with death. It was serious stuff. And they both needed a miracle, and one got it, and one lost it right there. Jairus didn't throw a party, party for this lady when she got healed. Say why? Because he just lost his daughter. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this tonight? Yeah, amen. He just lost his daughter. Man, there's great sorrow in his heart, great sadness. And Christ, through this story, teaches us some things about faith. Four things that Christ teaches about faith. Let me give it to you real quick. First of all, Christ teaches us that faith is man's only connection to God. They say tonight, you either believe or you don't. Right. You either believe or you don't. Amen. You either make a conscious decision that I am going to believe in the God of heaven Amen. or I am not. Yeah, that's it. You either got to get in or get out. Right. There's no middle ground. There's no straddle the fence with Christ. You can't believe halfway and get Christ on your side. You have to jump all the way in. Hey, you, you either got to get in church or you, hey, if you're going to see God do so, you say, man, church just don't work me. That's because you're not in it. That's because you come once in a while. That's because you think, well, I'll try it for a little while, but, but for some reason it just ain't working for me. I'll tell you why. Because you ain't working it. Church don't work unless you work it. Unless you read your Bible, unless you do what the preacher says, people who don't follow the advice of the pulpit will not grow. They, they'll, listen now, you got seven years with them. you got seven years with them, and they'll move out the door. If they don't grow in seven years, they're, they're leaving. Listen to me now. Mark, my, I've been told that. I've been told that all my life as a pastor. I've been told that. Okay? Let me tell you, it's true. They're leaving. I know. I know who they are. Early, I can mark them. Why? Why? And good people, but they don't want to grow. Yes. They don't want to tithe. Yes. They don't want to read their Bible. Uh -huh. They don't want to pray. They don't want to go solely. They don't want to go to church three times a week. They don't want to believe in Christ. They don't want to back their pastor up. They don't want to serve God in the church. They don't want to ride a bus route. They don't want to love people and care. They don't bring food for the for the for the for the fellowship that we're having. They don't want to get involved. They just want to come and do what they can do and listen. And if it changes me, great. But they don't want to put anything into it. Christ teaches us that you're either going to believe or not. There's no middle ground with Christ. You've either got to jump in or it won't work for you. Did you hear what I said? Faith. The only way we find access to God's power for the work is through faith. Believing that God can. Believing that God will. For a Christian, the only way forward is through faith in God and His abilities. We've got to believe that God can and that God will. And you say, well, Lord, I, I believe before and I put faith in God and He let me down. Let me just stop and say this. Maybe He didn't let you down. Maybe He saved you some heartache. Yeah, Huh? You know what happens is we get mad at God's will. We don't like it sometimes. Especially when it contradicts our will. Yep. Amen. I wanted my mom healed. That's what I wanted. 63 years of age, she contracts breast cancer. Healthiest woman in church. I had a she had a spool of vitamins on her thing. She took so many she was she was the hardest worker in our church. Gary, you can ask my mom, I'm not just saying this because she's my or ask my wife, but I'm not just saying this because she's my mom. She's the hardest worker in the church. She, you drive by her house, she's outside in the yard doing yard work. Her house was immaculately clean. She lived by herself. She was just a hard-working lady. She kept a job and worked a second job so she could give more money to missions. As a single lady, the last year of her, in, her, in our church, she gave $14,000 to our church. 
Last year of our church. Last year of her life. She gave $14,000. That's more than I gave. Not my much, but that was more than I gave. That's, that's, that's mom. She'd tell me, she'd tell me, Chad, when she got sick with cancer, she made me go work her second job. <laughs> Why? Because when I kicked this thing by Scott, I won it so I can keep giving emissions. Hey. We had to go clean the doctor's office, didn't we? Ashley was telling me that she goes, so we were driving, up, uh, I think we were driving to Hot Springs, she said, I think she saw something, or remembered the doctor's office, she goes, I hate that doctor's office. <laughs> How, uh, well, we were for three years. Three, about, about three years. We were involved maybe two or three years, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, they, they worked all the time. I, amen. I did. <laughs> the prayer of faith. Think about this. Faith is man's only connection to God. Listen, if you're going to be connected to God, it will be through faith and only faith. That's it. It'll be that you believe in God. That's the only way you're going to be connected to God is you believe there's liberty in Christ and you believe He can and will set you free. Yes, That's the yes. only way. Christ teaches us in this lesson right here. One lady believed and she got healed. Another man believed and his daughter died. Or did she die? He thought she died. She did die for a few minutes. But she came back to life. And what was it that brought her back to life? Hold on one, hold on one second, lady. Jairus, don't listen to that servant of yours. Jairus, don't listen to what they're telling you. Be not, a, don't fear death. Only believe that Christ said the only thing you need only believe. Be not afraid, Christ said. Just believe. When you have nothing else going for you, if you've got faith, you've got everything. Do you know what I said? Nothing else is going right. If you've managed to keep your faith, nothing else is going right. But you've managed for the burden. To keep believing in God, in His will, in His sovereignty, in what He wants and what He's doing in you and through you, if you still have faith, you've got it. It's all you need. With you and God, you're a majority in this area. Amen. faith that makes us all faith, that saves our soul faith, by which we grow in faith that sees us through. Faith in God, faith in God's ability. Secondly, not only does Christ teach us that faith is man's only connection to God. Secondly, Christ teaches us that God understands limitations on humanity. He understands limitations. He understands that I have limitations. Think about this. The very first thing he did with Jairus was say, be not afraid. Why do you address that? Because he knew what Jairus is experiencing right at that moment on the inside. Fear. Right? You're sitting here tonight and God knows what's in your heart right now. He knows. He knows. You're, he knows. He knows. The God of heaven knows, Jared, what, what you fear. Right? He knows. And he addresses that, right? But he stops with this lady and he turns to Jairus and says, Hey, two, two, two comments. Be not afraid, only believe. Why? He understands that we in human bodies are limited right. because there's things we cannot see right. and things we cannot understand. But God understands it all. This is we're going a little bit deeper here tonight. I hope you are, are you with me here tonight? Uh -huh. Fear of what we see hinders our faith in what we cannot see. 
fear of what we see hinders our faith in what we cannot see. Jairus, your daughter's dead. Fear of what he saw. His daughter is dead. Fear of what he saw hinders. Hinders. Why did Christ immediately say, be not afraid? Only both be, don't, 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 don't worry about this. What was he saying? Don't worry about this, Jairus. Keep believing. Keep, what was Christ? He was, he was breathing life back into Jairus' faith because Jairus just lost it. Is that right? Amen. Fear of what we see. What did Jairus see? What did Jairus hear? Talk to me. What did he, what did he see? What did he hear? Yeah. Your daughter's dead. See, fear of what we see on this earth blinds us from those things we cannot see in heaven. Yeah, I mean. There's a work going on here, and sometimes you don't see it. And sometimes, does he ever get discouraged? Let's, let's, find, let's find out from this care. Does he ever get discouraged? Does he ever say, you know how I know this? Because i got a woman over here that, that she knows, right? I'm in Malvern. You're here. And there's things that worry me. Things that scare me. Things I cannot see. Going on. Would encourage me. But the things I see. The things I see blind me from remembering what I can't see. And that's God. The obstacles are sometimes so large. The Goliaths are so big. The mountains that we have to climb are so steep that we look around and we say, man, I just don't think I can do it. I just don't think I have the stamina. I just don't think I can, I, I can, I can get there. I don't think I can, I can help. I don't think I can do it. God understands our limitations. He understands. He comforts us. Because prayer expresses to God that in spite of what we see, we still believe. When you get you ever prayed and you didn't have it in you? You ever came to the altar and prayed and you didn't want to? You ever came to the altar and prayed and you didn't even know if you even believed? You ever been there? Uh, uh, have you ever have you ever just not prayed? You just sat there and said, I, I don't know what to say. Because I'm pretty ticked off right now. You know what God's saying to me? He's saying, Be not afraid. Only believe. He knows. He knows what you're made out of. He knows that He made you out of dust. The cheapest thing you can You're just a glorified spitball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Maybe it's not the cheapest thing he can buy in dirt. Right? He knows that. He remembers that. He understands that. He gets that. Thirdly, listen to now. Christ teaches us that what God does not understand, thirdly, is why human beings cannot base the future on what God has done for them in the past. Do you know what I just said? I'll say it again. What God cannot understand is why human beings don't base the future on what He's done for you in the past. Yeah, I know. You ever missed a meal? I haven't. Hey, hey, listen me out. And I, hey, and I, we didn't have the checks. There are times we didn't have checks. We couldn't cash a check. Oh, we didn't have any money. I ain't doing too bad. I've been eating. Are you with me? God's been taking care of me. God's paid the bills. We bought a house, brother, brother, brother JR came to me and he said, man, he goes, you wouldn't believe the houses are cheap up here, man. They are cheap, man. I was like, hey, man. He goes, I bought one for $65,000. Like, man, I didn't tell him. I bought one for $34,000. <laughs> Now are they're really cheap. It's already paid off. It's so cheap. That's cheap right there. Huh? It's the last house we looked at. 
the very last. She said, you know, there's one more I haven't showed you, but maybe I'll go over here. Nora Garvel lived there, walked in, I said, this is, this is it. It was, it was older, needs some remodeling and stuff. My wife grew up, she grew up in Plano, Texas. Some of you probably never even heard of Plano, Texas. Plano, Texas is a snobbish place. I mean, snobs, a bunch of snooty people, rich. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? Anybody, have you been to Plano? No. no. Anybody, anybody been to Plano? Plano, Texas, a bunch of snoots, right? Am I right? Am I just lying or not? I'm talking the houses are gigantic, all brick, as far as you can see. Just wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people. My wife grew up there. And she married up. <laughs> she married a guy that lived in the ghetto. Trailer trash, amen? And we moved in that house and she started fixing up and it had some problems. Our sewer was horrible. She lived in it. We lived in it for 10 years and she just dealt with it. She just didn't complain much. Only complained the little things. Amen. Right? Most pastors say she never complained. Well, you know, come on. <laughs> if I said that, I'd be lying. Am I, am I right? I'm just honest. We, we complain sometimes at our house. Talk to me now. We, we, complain, we complain this afternoon a little bit. Well, we had to get on the auto. I had to get right with God before I preached. Amen? If, yeah, we, 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 get, we wrap it up here. Just say, y'all can do your thing. <laughs> Hey, I've been in I've been in Sunday school before, and I've just said, folks, we're not going to have Sunday school. I'm going to get right with my wife first, and y'all do what you want to do, and I'll be back here. We'll preach in a second because I can't preach if me and my wife are not right. Listen to me now. You were there? Isn't that crazy? I've done it more than once. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying I just want to be real. Amen. There's there's not much difference between the guy that stands behind here and the person who sits in the pew. The only difference is God has called us to lead. That's right. That's right. Amen. Listen to me now. And submit. That's right. Submitting yourself one to another. Amen. And God has called you to submit to the pastor as well. Pastors are supposed to submit to the church. Huh? Amen. Well, there's some areas that we're supposed to submit. Oh yeah, oh, there's some areas. You, you hold the authority over us. You look, you look at me like, really? Why do you know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some areas, yeah. You say, well, that, that's, that's morality. Morality, you hold authority over that morality. He's got to be a moral man. Amen. 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 Huh? And if he's not, you... Are you listening now? I'm completely off track right now. I'm meddling right now. Get back to the message. My wife lived in the house for 10 years and the Lord set it on fire. One night, it's Christmas night. Christmas night, 2010. The year I came to preach for you, 2010. Christmas night, 2010. I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Christmas was on a Saturday that year. And so it would have been Sunday morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. I usually get up at 5 on Sunday morning. Sunday morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. I was laying in bed. The Lord woke me up. And I was laying there. I was like, should I get out of bed? Should I not? I was debating it. You ever been there? And I'm like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I could probably go back to sleep. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. What do I do? And I smelled something burning. I started smelling something burning. It was burning leaves at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Oh, world, why you burn leaves? I looked in my bedroom, my door was cracked, and our living room is right through our door, and I saw some flickering. And I thought to myself, oh, what's flickering in there? I got out of bed and I walked around and the house was on fire. I woke my family up, I woke my kids up, I got in the car, I grabbed a suit so I could breach. <laughs> I gotta preach. I better grab a suit real quick. I was just I grabbed my suit. I grabbed my cell phone, my wallet, important things, the computer. 
my sermon was on the computer. I had to get my sermon out. The Lord set that house on fire, and they came in. They remodeled the entire house. They took the plumbing out. It only affected two rooms. They put brand new windows. We've got a brand new house today. We have a brand spanking new house. The structure is still there. Say so why? Because God did something for us. And just remind us that if you'll just trust me, we'll just take, I'll, I can take care of you. Who woke me up that night? Amen. Who woke me up that night? That's hey, right. John, be not afraid. Just believe. Amen. God doesn't understand. God marvels at our doubt when he's done so much for us in the past. Yeah. So, okay. So if that happened to me, would you are going to say, Lord, you are, man, you kind of made, man. God's been good to you, right? Why did I still have trouble with faith in Mark, God marvels at that. How can you doubt after all I've done for you? Right. Came to Malvern, Arkansas 14 years ago. I, this, I was building a bus route in Chicago, man. I, I, I've been on the route for nine years in Chicago. I could not get a Puerto Rican to come for a taco. <laughs> My, oh, you don't like tacos. That's probably the problem. If what you would have told me that back then. I couldn't get a little boy. Yeah, I should what's those he's called? Pastelillos! I should have gave him pastelillos or whatever they're called. Man, I could, my bus route went, my bus captain gave it to me, and he had he had 13 workers, two bus drivers, and he was averaging about 65 on Sundays. Man, I built that sucker. I built it to one bus driver, that was me. Two lady workers. One was my wife. Actually, three. One with my wife and two little ladies. Kim. Kim Ship, remember? And I was bringing a, a Hardy 19 on bus. One day I had one kid. I took the bus back to the company and drove in. I wasn't driving up with Ray Young standing out there looking at me like I was crazy. He's a man. He was making me nervous, man. He would have ripped my feet off walking the bus and he would have ripped my face off. You have. <laughs> You brought how many to church on that bus? One? Anyway. My daughter, who's only 11, can bring more kids. Anyway. <laughs> what God tore me down. And I was going to Malvern, and I was like, what am I thinking? Why am I going to a place to build a church where there are, listen, it's now 40 Baptist churches already in a town of 9,000. Why am I going to Malvern? I've told you to. Oh. Now we've got a beautiful facility. Fourteen years later, hundreds saved, baptized. Why? Be not afraid. I don't believe. Listen to me. Last last point. I'm done. Strong, determined faith is what compels a response from God. Two people had great faith there. Two people saw great miracles. Daughter, by faith, that may be. Jairus, don't be afraid. Only believe. Now let me ask you a question. Where's your faith at tonight? Struggling? You're wondering, you're questioning? Is God still there? He's still working. Every day about every close follow, we love you tonight. A simple message about faith, believing in you. God, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you bless us tonight. Lord, if our faith gets weak, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that we remember to just believe and be not afraid. I pray that the circumstances would not change. Lord, the outcome of our futures. God, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you bless the sermon tonight. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. How many here say, Lord Horton, I know that I'm saved. I've been born again. Would you raise your hand? I hope there just for a second if I were to I know for sure I'm going to heaven. Thank you so much. You can put your hands down. Is there one here that say, Brother Lord, I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. Not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. Is there one like that tonight? Pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved. Is there anyone here say, Brother Lord, I'm struggling with an area in my life. Maybe you didn't even mention it tonight, but I'm struggling with something in my life. Brother Lord, pray for me. Would you slip your hand up? Boy, hands all over. 
all over the building. Would you put your hands down for a second? How many of you specifically, something is challenging your faith and you're struggling with it right now? A circumstance, I see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Listen me now, listen me now. The altar is for you. The, the music's going to play. Would you stand to your feet tonight? Would you stand to your feet tonight? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you step out and come tonight?